everyone welcome to my channel my name is Nelly if this is your first time seeing my face you're absolutely welcome to my space so I make videos from the land of the rising sun home of blue samurai aka Japan <laughs> in this space I share with you my life in Japan I share with you anything I consider interesting that I want us to talk about so this is the space you should consider subscribing to because you're definitely not going to be disappointed I can tell you that for sure <music> So on last week's video, I said I was going to do a video addressing uh, assumptions about Japan. So that's what we are going to be doing today. So assumption number one, cars are cheaper in Japan than they are in any other part of the world. So I can completely understand where the assumption comes from. I mean, Japan is home to Toyota, Nissan, Daihatsu, Subaru, just to name a few. So I, oh, Honda as well. So I can completely understand why people think that cars are cheaper or extremely cheap in japan so first of all we are not going to focus on the new cars because the people who make this assumption generally are not referring to brand new cars rather they are referring to second hand cars so when it comes to buying second hand cars in japan there are a couple of things to consider so in japan there's something called shaken Shaken in English is roadworthiness certificate. The name speaks for itself, roadworthiness. So it's just to show that the car is worthy of using or being used on the Japanese roads, if you get what I mean. So if you're buying a car, so the Shaken normally lasts for two years, actually. So if you're buying a car whose Shaken is almost about to expire, it's going to be very cheap. But if you're buying a car whose Shaken has even expired, it's going to be the cheapest of all of them. However, if you're buying a car whose Shaken is still left maybe a year or a year, six months, then it's going to be more expensive than a car whose Shaken is left few months or has expired. So if you're considering using this car in Japan, then buying a car that the Shaken is still left a long period of time is more advantageous. So if you're buying a car whose shaken is expired or whose shaken is about to expire, definitely you're going to think that buying a car in Japan is very cheap because this car is going to be sold to you at a giveaway price. So you see why people think buying, so you see why people think cars are cheap in Japan. So if you're comparing the age of cars in Japan with the age of cars in other countries, definitely Japanese cars are still very much new as opposed to buying a car in America or in Europe. Oh, Europe cars are so old. No shade to Europe people. But when you compare the two, Japanese cars look much newer than Europe cars and even than cars bought in America or cars sold in America. Assumption number two is that phones are very cheap in Japan. Cool products are not manufactured in Japan. Samsung products are not manufactured in Japan. So I don't know why anyone who think that phones are very cheap in Japan. Previously in Japan, they used to have the system where the phones were locked to particular phone companies. So if you're buying a phone and it's locked, then definitely when the phone is being sold to you, it's going to be far cheaper than buying a phone which is unlocked. But the disadvantage of buying these locked phones is that they are only locked to, they are only open to the particular service provider so you can't use it between service providers however if you know how to unlock phones and then you buy this kind of phones definitely you're going to find it cheaper but to tell you the truth phones are not cheaper in japan than they are in other countries assumption number three is that computers are cheap in japan in fact electronics are cheap in japan ah, i don't really know where anyone got this assumption from but to be honest computers are not cheap in japan in fact electronics are not cheap in japan forget the fact that in japan japan is the home of electronics but to tell you the truth those things are not cheap in japan if you want to buy a japanese made computer it's going to be far more expensive than even buying a computer a foreign made computer that's how expensive it is so you might even buy electronics made in japan outside of japan far cheaper than you would buy it in japan that's how different the prices are so no electronics are not cheaper in japan computers are not cheaper in japan it might be better for you to buy those things somewhere else than for you to buy it in japan number four that if you move around in japan you you mostly see people wearing kimonos or wearing cosplay costumes mm. That is not true. Actually, on a normal day in Japan, most people are either dressed in suits or they are dressed in shirts or they are dressed in 
dresses and skirts or you really wouldn't see people on a normal day dressed in cosplay attires or kimonos however if there's like an event or a festival then you see people dressed in kimonos or if it's a cosplay festival then you see people dressed in cosplay costumes but other than that on a normal day you don't see people dressed like that most people just dress normally as you would see people dressed in your country number five that japan is the same as china ah i get it i mean japanese have kanji chinese have kanji uh if you have not studied the languages it might be difficult for you to comprehend but they are two different countries their histories might be the same but apart from that no japan and china are two different worlds i find that most times when you tell someone you're in japan their mind records it as China and then the next time you're talking to them, they're like, oh, how is China? I'm like, mm, sorry, I'm not in China, I'm in Japan. And then they're like, oh, but it's the same thing. You speak the same languages. I'm like, mm, no, I can understand a little bit of Japanese, but I cannot understand Chinese because it's not the same thing. The characters are not even the same. Chinese have kanji for everything. Japanese don't have kanji for everything. Some things they write it in hiragana, some things they write it in katakana. So Chinese and Japanese are not the same people. China and Japan is not the same thing. Assumption number six is that all Japanese love manga and anime. Mm, some Japanese salary men actually love to read manga. And it's very easy for you to relate with younger generation if you actually watch anime or you read manga because they will most likely ask you, oh, what's your favorite anime or what's your favorite manga? So if you can relate based on that level, then it's like an icebreaker. But apart from that, most people you meet in Japan might not really be reading, man reading manga or watching anime. But then you have some men who actually watch it on the train. But yeah, we've come to the end of that discussion. If you have some other assumptions, which you thought I was going to address, but I didn't address in the video, leave in the comment section below and I would definitely address it. So thank you so much for staying tuned with me. If you loved what I discussed about, you know what to do. Give this video a thumbs up. And if you've not already subscribed until now, please click that subscribe button right there and click the bell sign. Click the bell button so that each time I post the video, you will be on the VIP list of people who will watch the videos first. How cool is that? Like being able to watch my videos the first person. So see you in the next video. Bye.